Amen. God bless everybody. God bless everybody. Good to see you tonight. Amen. Glory to your name, Father. Come on in. Come on in, everyone. God is good. Thank God for everyone who's coming in tonight. Amen. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you. Thank you all for coming in. God bless you tonight. Amen. Amen. Good to see everyone tonight. Amen. We're, we are live. We are going to start our Bible study shortly. Uh, thank God for everyone who's coming in. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Those who are on uh, Facebook, those who are on Zoom, those who are on YouTube, God bless you. God bless you. God bless everybody. Amen. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. Go ahead and like and share the page. Let someone know that we are studying the word of God tonight. Amen. Go ahead and get, uh, get someone, bring someone on board with you is what I'm trying to say. Amen. Go ahead and bring someone on board with you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lloyd, Lloyda, for liking our page. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless everybody. Good to see you. Hi, Sheila. How are you? Hello, Rochelle. God bless you. God bless you. All right. We're going to get started momentarily. I'm just trying to give everybody a chance to get here and to like and share the post. Amen. Tell somebody about the Bible study. Praise the Lord. We want everybody to be a part. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you. Good to see you. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it already. God bless you. Okay, yes. <laughs> God bless everybody. Thank you to those of you who are on Zoom. Good to see you tonight. Mike and Beth, good to see you. Uh, Tanya, probably Doug as well. Brother Jay and Barbara, God bless you all for joining us. Uh, we know more people will probably join us tonight, uh, but we want to just get the word out there that uh, Bible study is happening. Amen. Bible study is going on uh, tonight. And so we want to make sure that everybody has opportunity. Going to take a couple more minutes to get uh, everybody here. Amen. Uh, we're going to try to get um, try to get ready for this wonderful lesson that we have tonight. Amen. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Today is a wonderful day. It was a beautiful fall day. Amen. Good temperature, a little chilly, but not too bad. We had some sun out there. So I'm excited about that. That it wasn't, it wasn't a bad day. It was a good day. Amen. Get your Bibles, get your phones. Get your notepad, get ready for Bible study. Amen. All right. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. We are definitely ready to get started. Amen. All right, I am going to pray and then we are going to start here, start our lesson here. Uh, have a good lesson tonight. Love your enemies. Oh, okay, we're going to learn about that tonight. We're going to see what we have to say about that. 
Praise the Lord. All right, dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you tonight. Lord, we bless you and we praise you, Father. We lift you up and we magnify you, oh God, for truly you are an awesome God. You're wonderful. Hallelujah, God. And we thank you for this very day. God, we pray that you would uh, just infiltrate our atmosphere right now, Father. Let your presence be with us, oh God. Come on in the room, Lord, and sup with us, oh God. Help us to draw nigh unto you as you draw nigh unto us on tonight, Lord. God, we come to study your word. God, we come to hear a word from you, oh Father. So let me move out the way. Whatever it is that you have to say, God, I pray that you will speak through me, oh God, but also speak to me, Lord, for I know that you have much to say. Oh God, I ask that you would open up our hearts, hallelujah, God, that we will, uh, that, that the word will fall on good ground tonight. Father, open up our eyes of understanding. Father, enlighten us tonight. Oh God, I ask that you would even um, take, 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 take the, the, uh, take our ears and open them up, Father, that we could even hear you even more clearly. God, help, help us in our eyes, Lord, that we can see you clearly, oh Father. God, I ask that you would even bind up the works of the enemy, cast the devil out, bind up distractions, disturbances, derailments, deterrences of all kind. Father, I pray that this broadcast will will flow. I pray, oh God, that there will be no interference, oh Father, no technical difficulties, oh God. And I pray that you will put it on the heart of, of your people, oh God, that may have forgotten, may not be thinking about Bible study, may not have even ever heard of us, Lord. Put it on their hearts, oh God, to join us tonight, Lord, that they can hear a word, oh God, that all of our lives will be enhanced and uplifted and encouraged and even changed and transformed tonight. Lord, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. Love, love, love your enemies. And I know when we say that, it is a, a hard thing. Amen. Sometimes it's a very hard thing to hear that because we always want to just continue and we think we are being loving and we think that, you know, we're going through our lives without there being a big issue. Amen. But sometimes uh, we have to be brought back to remembrance of some of the things that the word of, of the Lord has said. Amen. And so we want to make sure that, um, that we are actually studying the word to remember what he has said about this. Amen. And so we're going to start tonight uh, in the word of God. I want you to turn with me to Matthew. Amen. A uh, very familiar scripture. I know everybody knows this, right? I know everybody knows the word uh, that we'll be re referring to tonight. Um, but prayerfully, we will hear a new sound. Amen. Prayerfully, we will hear something different. We want to know what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Amen. So let's turn to Matthew 5. 43 through 48 is where we're going to start. Amen. And again, I know you have heard this, so it should not be anything new. Amen. Uh, so I'll give you a moment to get there. Thank you, uh, everyone, again, uh, for coming in to the Zoom, coming in to Facebook. Um, and I'm sure maybe some people are on uh, YouTube. I haven't checked that yet. But thank God for the people of God who are who want to study the word. Amen. Uh, that 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 we just are we're not ashamed. Amen. And we're rightly dividing this word tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you for liking the page. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for giving me hearts or whatever else you want to, uh, you know, put there in the comments. We'll be glad to take the comments. We'll also be glad to take any feedback or any questions that you have about the lesson. Uh, I'll be happy to entertain that for you tonight. Amen. All right. So are we there? I think we're there. Are we there? Okay, so we are at Matthew. We are looking at Matthew 5, 43 through 48. And I believe I actually have that scripture for you. Let me try to share my screen um, and we will look at that uh, word together. Um, praise the Lord. Amen. All right, so love your enemies. 
Okay, you're going to try to do this tonight. All right, so here it is. And it says, ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 45. And it says that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them, which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans do so? Amen. And so verse 48 says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Amen. And so thank God for this scripture. We know that this, uh, again, is a familiar scripture. We've heard this and thank God uh, that he gave us some instructions, amen, uh, some instructions to actually be, uh, be kind and loving towards one another. And we know that our God is gracious enough to be kind and loving towards us, amen. And so I want to talk tonight a little bit uh, about a, a little bit of the background of this. And then we're going to move forward into what I believe the Lord is saying. Amen. And so uh, what I want to do uh, is talk about how this came to be. Amen. And so tonight, let's, we're going to learn how to love our enemies. Amen. So let's look at this. So what I want you to see here is that we're in Matthew, which is one of the Gospels, amen. And what I should have shown you is that this entire passage that we just read is actually in red, amen. It's actually in red because uh, it is Jesus who is speaking in this passage, amen. And uh, he was talking to us and he wanted us to know that uh we are to love our enemies, yes, but he is also talking about much, much more, amen. And so uh, he was actually talking um, very candidly to not only the disciples, but to also the onlookers that were listening to him at the time, amen. And so what I would like to do is kind of um, look at this a little bit more. Um, in verses, I want to back up to verse 17. Amen. I want to back up to verse 17 so that we can see the context of what was happening at this time. So let's look at uh, verse 17 through 21. It says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Amen. Now remember, Jesus was a teacher. They called him master. Amen. They called him teacher as well as prophet because uh, he demonstrated so much knowledge in the word of of God. And so it, he's saying here, don't think I've come to destroy what has already been laid as a foundation. Amen. And so he's speaking here about Moses. He's speaking here about uh, the leaders before that actually gave the word of God. And the people were reading that word that came from him. Amen. Uh, so he said, listen, I didn't come to destroy that. Um, I am not come to destroy, but to what? To fulfill. Amen. So he came to fulfill the law, not to destroy it. And then in verse 19, it says, uh, I'm sorry, in verse 18, it says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Verse 19, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. So here we have Jesus saying that, listen, if you're a teacher or if you're a scribe or a Pharisee, really you are the ones who were teaching in the synagogues. If you're one of those people, amen, who are teaching men something different than what I said, then you're going to be called the least in the kingdom. 
Amen. If you yourself are breaking these commandments and teaching other people to do the same, amen, then you are going to uh, be the least in the kingdom, but you will be the greatest in the kingdom if you listen to what I say and you do as I say and you teach others the same. Amen. And so he wanted us to understand that it's very important to stick to the word of the Lord. So verse 20, it says, for I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, amen, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And verse 21 says, ye shall, ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, amen. And so, first of all, we already established that it's Jesus that's talking, amen. And a matter of fact, almost this whole entire chapter is read, praise the Lord. And so Jesus himself is letting us know that we are to be what? Righteous, amen. But he cautioned us in these verses that we are not to follow the law of man. He said, look, I didn't come to destroy the law. But he did come to destroy the misinterpretation of it. Amen. So how do I know this? How do I know this? Because he said in verse 19, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom. So again, the teachers of this time were the scribes and the Pharisees. And if you know anything about Jesus, almost throughout all the gospels, um, he, he had to correct them. Amen. He had to set them straight, so to speak. Praise the Lord. And so in other words, what he was saying is they have given you the law Amen. But they've given it to you in the sense of re religion and religiosity. Amen. And they have distorted the true essence of what it means to be a disciple. Amen. And so if anyone teaches you different, amen, if anyone teaches you that you're just to be religious, praise the Lord, then you are the least in the kingdom. But since you call me, Jesus is saying, since you call me master, since you call me teacher, then let me teach you. Praise the Lord. And so he came to straighten all of this out for us. Amen. So I want you to see here. He didn't call us to live by tradition. Lord, have mercy. Amen. He didn't call us to live by tradition. Amen. Tradition is the customs or beliefs of that generation. Amen. It is the customs or beliefs that have been set forth and left behind by the elders that preceded us. Amen. And so most people, when they hear things, they hear things and think, oh, this is true because my grandma said it, because my great grandmother said this, because this is the established uh, system in our organization, whatever that may be. Amen. Because this is the way we've been doing it. Why should it change? Amen. And so this is the thing that Jesus was coming to destroy, not the law itself. Amen. But the tradition of men, because we weren't called here to serve man. We were called here to serve the Lord. Amen. And so now uh, that we see um, in this scripture, I want you to see this very clearly. Amen. Because some things have been made up for men to follow, but yet are, do not have the true essence of what the Lord is trying to say. Amen. And so I have it here, um, down here at the bottom where it says Matthew 5. Amen. If you look at this whole entire chapter, praise the Lord, it says, verse 21, ye have heard that it was said of old time. Verse 27, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Verse 31, it has been said. Verse 33, again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time. Verse 38, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Verse 43, ye have heard that it has been said. We've heard everything that everybody else has said. Amen. But Jesus came to say one thing. He said, but I say, 
unto you this, amen, this and that, that and this, and that's what we're learning tonight, amen, what did he say about loving your enemies? That's what we need to know. Praise the Lord. And so let's look at verse 21. Amen. Let me stop sharing for a minute. So let's look at verse 21. Amen. Let's look at it. So verse 21 says, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time that thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. It's in red. Amen. Verse 22, but I say, <laughs> I being Jesus, not me being uh, Pastor Nata, I say that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Amen. So listen, uh, you shall not kill. How do we kill? Sometimes we kill by what we do, but also by what we say. <laughs> the Bible says, love your enemies, but we killing them all day long. How? With this. Amen. I'll get to it a little later. Let's look at verse 38. Verse 38 says, ye have heard that it was said of them of old time. Remember the old tradition says this, an eye for an eye and a two for a two. That's what the old tradition says. That's what people rationalized should be the case, amen, uh, because why wouldn't you get back at them? Why, why not? It's my instinct. Somebody do this, I'm going to do this, right? But verse 39 says, but I say unto you that ye should resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Oh, we're not going to do that. Not, not the other cheek, Jesus. Is that what you said? Amen. It's a hard thing. But let me break this down for you a little bit. Everybody thinks, oh, somebody slapped you, got to let them slap you again. No, that's not what he was saying. The custom of this day was basically a phrase or a saying uh, was smite you on your right cheek, which meant that somebody says something insulting about you. Amen. That's what it meant. Amen. You have to study to find that out. I hope you will go back and study and check me. Amen. That's what it meant. So he was saying, listen, if they throw an insult out at you, let them throw another. Amen. Because the Bible says, look, let, let God be true. Let man be a lie. Amen. But let God be true. Amen. So you can't go chasing a lie. You can't go chasing down what somebody's saying about you. Yes, it hurts. No, nobody wants that to happen. But guess what? Turn the other cheek. In other words, Turn and go your own way. Do what you were doing anyhow, amen? Because guess what? You, you can't stop somebody from doing what they're gonna do. The Bible says, what vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Amen, I will repay is what he said in the word. So we cannot chase a lie. You're gonna waste your time. You're not gonna get to the bottom of it. It, you're going to have to confront some things that you might not even want to confront. Listen, that might not even be the will of the father. Amen. And obviously it isn't. He said, listen, don't do that. Amen. Let's look in verse 43. Verse 43 says, ye have heard that it hath been said, <laughs> thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Now, we could logically conclude that. We could logi logically say, you know what? I'm just going to hate. Uh, hey, they hate me. I hate them. I've had friends that were like, uh, you're going to get what you give out. If they give out this to me, I'm they're going to get this from me. Oh, hmm, okay. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. Does it not? Amen. But it says here, <laughs> Verse 44, but I say unto you, I being Jesus, 
I say unto you, love your enemies. Oh, it's painful. Good Lord, did he really say that? Amen. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Amen. Amen. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? That ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on evil and on the good. Amen. He makes his son to rise on the evil. In other words, I am El Roy. Amen. I have eyes in every place. I behold the good and the evil. Don't worry about it. You don't think uh, that they, they're they being seen. Amen. A lot of times we get angry because we are like, how they just keep getting away with this, Lord? <laughs> but he's trying to say, no, no, El Roy is on the scene. That's E-L space R-O-I, Elroy, amen? And he is saying, listen, I behold the good and the evil. I don't just see good. I see the evil too. But because I don't rush to bring judgment so you can see it, doesn't mean that I'm not going to deal with it. Amen? And that's good news to me. I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. Amen. And so he said, listen, verse 45, I think is where I was. He said that ye may be children of the father, which is in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and the good and send of rain on the just as he does the unjust. Listen, when it rains, the, the rain doesn't just spatter on the, on the bad people. Otherwise, we all be wet, would we not? <laughs> Wouldn't be no umbrella that could help us. Amen. But he said he rain when it rains, it rains on everybody. Amen. Because he takes care of everybody. It's his business what to bring judgment to. Amen. All right. And so now he said, and uh, he said, for if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Amen. If you love who loves you, what reward do you have? Amen. Do not even the publicans have the same? Verse 47, and if you salute your brethren only, what do you do more than others? You're greeting someone who, who you have no problem with. That, that's easy to do. Amen. Amen. But verse 48 says, be ye therefore perfect. Or in other words, do the best you can with what you know. Amen. Even as your father in heaven does the same. Amen. And so now I want you to see here um, in this Bible how, let's break this down a little bit. Amen. And so uh, let's see here. It says, love your enemies. And if you have questions, comments, put them in the chat. I will try to read them um, and get Get and interject them into what we're doing. Amen. And so it says, love your enemies. Ha. All right. Love your enemies. So what I'm going to do, if you see in verse 44 here, I have highlighted in different colors, right? Love your enemy is going to be one thing that we're going to deal with. Bless them that curse you will be something separate. Amen. Do good to them that hate you. Another part of this verse, we're going to break it down separately and then pray for them, which despitefully use you and persecute you. Let's see what we can learn tonight. Amen. Let's see if there's anything uh, different that the Lord wants to reveal to us. Amen. I uh, thank God for all of you who are with us. Thank you for, um, for your comments. Thank you for your questions. If you have any, I appreciate everyone that uh, is with us tonight. Amen. Um, and so let's go ahead and go forth in this, praise the Lord. And so now, love your enemies. Remember, that's the red part, right? Love your enemies. Okay, so love, what is love? All right, I know somebody can help me. I know somebody's going to help me in the comments. Somebody's going to help me on Facebook. What is love? God bless you, Lenita. Good to see you tonight. Amen. God bless you, Cindy. I see you. Praise the Lord. And so what is love? <laughs> what is it? Anybody want to help us out tonight? What is love? What is love? Love. 
So I have it written here. Love is an intense feeling of deep affection. It's great interest and pleasure in doing something. A person or thing that one loves, amen? That's what love is, praise the Lord. And so I have a few scriptures here. Hopefully you will write these down. If we don't get uh, to all of them, I hope you will write them down. We're only deal dealing with love your enemy right now, amen? Uh, thank you, Lanita. Lanita said, it's a feeling that you have towards someone, a positive feeling, amen, a loving feeling, amen. Thank you for that, Lanita. I appreciate that. Praise the Lord. And so uh, let's look at a couple of these scriptures. It says in Matthew 22 and 39, uh, a second is equally important. He's saying a second command, amen, is equally important that you love your neighbor as yourself. So if I love my neighbor as myself, let's just talk about love for a minute. Then who do I need to love first? Hi, Gloria. Who do I need to love first? I need to love myself first. Amen. Well, really God first, then myself, then my neighbors or anyone who's around me, whether it's spouse, whoever it is, right? Amen. So that's Matthew 22 and 39. John 13 and 35 says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my what? Disciples. Yes, so we are disciples if we can demonstrate love, right? Because we just read in the scripture that if we uh, do not, uh, if, if we only love those that love us back, amen, then what demonstration is that, amen? But if we wanna be like Jesus was, then we have to show love to everyone, amen? That's how they're gonna know, amen, because they're going to know something's different. Praise the Lord. We have to be different from the world. Amen. Because somebody in the world, if you spew out something to them, they're going to get you back. Amen. Period. That, that's just how that is, right? In the world. Amen. But if we are doing something different and we're coming back with love, then, oh, my Lord, they going to, somebody's going to say, well, what? Hmm what's going on here? Amen. And the Bible says what? Love is patient. Love is kind. Amen. We know 1 Corinthians chapter 13, how it talks about, I think it's even four through eight, how it talks about, listen, love never fails. Amen. Love never fails. It's not looking to uh, figure out how many times you've been wrong. It's not looking to figure out uh, whether or not you are doing something wrong, amen? But love is trying to cover, amen? Love covers a multitude of faults, praise the Lord. And so now let's look at here. I don't see any comments, amen? So let's look here. Um, it says, uh, I would, well, this is what I wanted you guys to do, kind of a little exercise. Think about a situation you may have had with a difficult person, okay? This is somebody that's difficult, <laughs> right? Because that's what makes it hard, right? That's what gets us in trouble. This person is difficult, amen? Somebody that you would call an enemy. Think about it. Let's just, let's just think, let's just think. Let's just think for a moment. Amen. Now, some people might have to think real hard. Other people don't have to think hard at all because you just dealt with that today. <laughs> Amen. You just dealt with that moments ago. Amen. Uh, but let's think about it. And what I want to urge you to do is write down the negative emotion. Come on. Write down the negative emotion that can be felt when you encounter difficult or negative people. Because listen, that's the whole issue, right? The whole issue is that when we encounter someone who we would call an enemy or even a difficult person or someone that, uh, some type of situation that's difficult, that this, that this person makes difficult, amen, all the time. Every time you're around them, oh my gosh, here we go again. And see, that's a negative that's a negative emotion. 
you don't really want to be around them anymore, or you don't want to deal with it, or you don't want to uh, expend energy, right, on this person. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, somebody in the comments, Barbara said, yes, you got to let things roll off your shoulders, right? You try to, you want to, that's a good idea and everything. But sometimes <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Can anybody be a witness to that? Amen. Give me some likes, some hearts. Give me some comments, some amen, some yeses or something, right? Amen. Because we want to do the right thing. <laughs> but our emotions have this negative reaction because this person again, right? <laughs> this person again, oh, I'm walking down the hallway in, at, on my job and I just want to do a beeline to the left. I see this other person coming, right? Okay. But we got to get to a point <laughs> to where we can deal with the person. Amen. So let's look at this. Hopefully you broke down something. Hopefully you're thinking of something. Hopefully you have something in mind, right? Okay, so let me let me show you this. I found this. This is not from me. Amen. This is something that I found. But let's look at this. These are personalities of different types of difficult people. Love your enemies. Ooh, right? So types of difficult people. Okay, the tank, I love this, the tank. The tank is rooted in control. They want to push, they want to yell, they want to intimidate, amen? Amen? This is the tank, praise the Lord. Now, I want you to just look at these and I want you to see if you can find any of these people in your life, amen? All right, next one is the sniper. The sniper uses sarcasm. I know you know somebody that's sarcastic. Every time you open your mouth, they open their mouth with something sarcastic trying to cut you down, amen? They criticize. They don't have nothing good to say. A sniper, as soon as, you, as soon as they see you, boom, they got to take you out, amen? That's control, amen? A know-it-all, a know-it-all. Know it all. And listen, don't just be trying to look for other people. You might have to find yourself in here too. Amen. Because I found myself in here that sometimes I can be a know it all. Praise the Lord. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Amen. A know it all is rooted in control. Amen. When you feel out of control of a situation, you might think, okay, let me use knowledge. Amen. To try to earn brownie points and look big and bad here, right? And so they dominate conversations. They talk. These are uh, people who might even, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, kiss up <laughs> to the boss. Amen. Uh, things like that. Amen. All right. A whiner. Anybody ever encountered a whiner? Oh, my Lord. Okay. Someone who constantly complains. I mean, they are never happy. <laughs> never. <laughs> Amen. Amen. A whiner. They are rooted in perfection. Praise the Lord. They want everything to be perfect. How many of you know everything will never be perfect? <laughs> it's only perfect in that which you are satisfied with. Amen. If you go outside and you say, oh, this day is perfect. It's it's not raining, the sun is shining, it's 89 degrees, I don't know, whatever you like, right? It's perfect to you. Somebody else is like, whoo, it's hot. Oh, Lord, I can't wait to get inside and get some, to some air conditioning because I can't be out here in the heat, honey. Uh, you know, like there's somebody else who's not going to be happy with that. So it's not a perfect day to them. It's only perfect to the person who can, uh, uh, who can uh, receive the goodness that there is in the situation. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. Amen, Lenita. Uh, she said, yes, it's draining at times. She also said your emotions will have you saying some not so nice words. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. A no person, 
a no person says no, no, they didn't even hear you even say your whole sentence. No, no, <laughs> no, no, nah, 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 you know, whatever. They disagree with everything because they're perfect and you're not, right? Amen. A nothing person doesn't do anything, but they got a problem with everything. And you give them an opportunity and they still got a problem. Oh no, I can't do that. Cause see, y'all don't want none of this. <laughs> I can't be the one <laughs> because y'all don't want none of this. See, I, 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 if I did it, then everybody would be, you know, celebrating, but I'm gonna just go on and let you do it. Cause y'all don't know what y'all doing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. A yes person is rooted in approval. They need approval. Agree to everything. Oh, yes. Oh, you want to go down to the store? Okay, yeah. Oh, you want me to run you over to the um to to that building now? Oh, and, and then you want to go down the street to the oh, and then you want, and it's like are you really going to let that person run you all over town? <laughs> really? <laughs> and you got kids at home and you got a husband to cook for and you in the car chasing this person down to the mall. Come on now. You can't be a yes person, right? We can't be people pleasers. Amen. Uh, be in response to uh, needing that approval. Amen. I could talk all day about some of this stuff. I'm going to keep going. Amen. Maybe, a maybe person, a maybe person, a maybe person won't commit or make a decision. <laughs> now, I'm like that when I go to a restaurant. When I go to a restaurant, I'm like, oh, I want everything. I want the lamb chops and the pork chops. I want the chicken and the steak <laughs> and some sushi if you got some. <laughs> Amen. So I'm like that with, with, with a restaurant for sure. But this is a maybe person. They're, they need approval. You're sitting in a meeting and, oh, well, you know, yeah, that needs to be done. I sure hope someone can get it done. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, just maybe. Uh, do you want to do it? Maybe. Mm, I'll let you know. Uh, and it's like, listen, if you won't commit, then the show must go on. Amen. <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> Amen. Grenade. Grenade needs attention. They throw tantrums when they don't get their way. Amen. Oh, this is somebody that can run all up, up the wall and back down, run all up, up upside your head and back down. Amen. I, I've had parents like that. Lord have mercy. Come in, come in my office and whoo. <laughs> it's like right? <laughs> and it's like, wow, so you're that upset about the fact that, uh, yeah, your child pushed someone down and caused them to scrape their knee and gave them a bloody nose, and you're upset because they have detention? Hmm. So you're going to just tear this whole office up because your child beat somebody up yesterday. Really? That, so you're going to tear up the whole office? Okay, <laughs> so you will meet people, amen, who villainize a situation and 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 turn it upside down and now they the victim. <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. They need attention. <laughs> they just need attention. So a friendly sniper, a friendly sniper uses jokes to pick on other people. Wow, so you taking me out, murder with your words. Did I not say that earlier? But this is what I like to call nice nasty. Because you can talk just like this and just be as phony and ugly and nasty as you can be. But everybody likes you because you smile, because you're charismatic and, and people just love you. But you're so nasty. Oh, you nasty. Oh my goodness, the stuff that you spew out your mouth. Lord, have mercy. Let me move on. Think they know it all, right? <laughs> they need attention. Exaggerates, lies, 
gives all the advice because they know I had a neighbor like that, Lord, the neighbor, everything I said, you know, I was outside trying to plant my grass. I told y'all about this uh, before, right? I was outside trying to plant my grass and all that. Honey, here come, here she come. Well, you know, you should have tested the soil because you're not going to know how much fertilizer to put on there because you didn't test the soil. And you know, you're going to have to water this grass every day. That's all the reason why it's not growing because you ain't watering it. And you know, this grass ain't even going to grow because it's too late in the season. And you know, the sun be shining down on it every day. So it's not going to grow. And I just feel like, how many times did she say my grass wasn't going to grow? How many times did she say that? <laughs> like, five times, it ain't going to grow. And you have to watch this because people will pronounce curses on you in your face. So I didn't say nothing to her. But when I came in my house, I said, Lord, put an extra anointing on this grass that it will grow, that you will teach me and show me what to do to get this grass to grow. And it's going to be nice and pretty and green and lush. And I'm going to have to cut it every week. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Listen, stop letting people tell you. Amen. We got to love our enemies. Some people are your enemy and they don't even know it. <laughs> Why? Because they just negative. Didn't nobody ask you all of that. I'm out here having fun. I don't care if the grass grow or not. I'm just cut, I'm just doing something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, y'all. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So anyway, I want to deal with the negative emotions. Because now she done said something. I don't even want to go outside. I don't even want to look at my grass. I'm scared because it takes two, three weeks for the grass to grow. So I'm feeling, I'm sweating bullets every day. Like, oh, Lord, she's going to come. Oh, Lord, here she, oh, God, she's going to say something about my grass. Oh, Lord, please, Lord, let the grass grow, Father. I mean, praying over the grass, y'all. Because <laughs> I don't want this neighbor to come say nothing to me. Amen. <laughs> so let's look at this. Praise the Lord. Let's look at this. What is the source? of the negativism, amen? What is the source of what's bothering you? Amen? Now, again, I told you, you gotta look at this both ways. We need to see ourselves, amen? And we need to see other people so that we can figure this thing out, amen? And I might have to come back and do part two of this, amen? Because this quarter till 748, I hope I get to a lot more of this, but we're going to break this down. That's why I showed you how I'm breaking it down, amen? So we're under love your enemies. So we talking about love and we talking about the emotions that we get when we don't encounter love, amen? Though we give it out, we don't always get it back, praise the Lord. So there's some negative emotions that can come up. Doubt, despair, grief, frustration, fear, <laughs> amen. And some of this we gotta deal with, amen, because the, the Lord said he wants us to love. How am I gonna get to the love if I'm frustrated every time I deal with them and we work together so they not going nowhere and I'm not going nowhere because I got to make my money, right, <laughs> amen. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying what people say. Amen. So let's try to figure this out. So if you look at your paper, if you wrote it down, which I hope you did the exercise, then there may be some of these negative feelings on your page, right? Amen. Frustration, aggravation, anger, discouragement. And we have to watch these things, especially that we don't get to bitterness and hatred. Amen. We don't want to get there. Amen. Because now they got us, right? They got us wrangled in real good. Amen. Okay. So let's look, let's look, let's look here. And these are just some more of those feelings, uh, some more things that you may have written down. Uh, we can talk more about those next time. Amen. So what is an enemy? What is an, love your enemy, but what is an enemy? What is it? Anybody got a comment? Anybody got anything that they want to say here, add? 
What is an enemy? What is an enemy? Amen. All right. An enemy is a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. Amen. <clears throat> an enemy is someone that harms or weakens something else. Oh my goodness. It's an opponent. It's a rival. It's an antagonist. It's someone who combats everything that you do. Somebody who challenges everything <laughs> that's being done. Amen. Why, why we can't do it this way? Why we can't do it that way? Why are you doing it like that? Well, why don't you do it like this? Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Deborah said, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Deborah. Amen. And so we have to figure out who our enemies are, but we have to figure out how to keep them from being enemies. Praise the Lord. That's the hard part of this. Amen. So I have this. I saw this on Facebook and I decided to interject it here tonight. It said, beware of the people who are in your circle, but not in your corner. Beware of people who are in your circle, but not <laughs> in your corner. Amen. Listen, your job is a circle. It's plenty of people there. But don't you make the mistake of thinking everybody's in your corner. You put out that idea. Somebody come take your idea. Now, all of a sudden, y'all enemies. <laughs> right? Don't, don't you with friends because you speak to each other every time you end up in a break room together. I didn't think nothing was wrong. <laughs> your church is your circle. Everybody in your church might not be in your corner. And boy, don't I know <laughs> as a pastor, <laughs> everybody is not in my corner. Love, look, I mean, speak to me every Sunday. I ain't gonna go there. Our family is our circle. And I, I don't necessarily mean your immediate family, but we have extended family. My cousin, I thought my cousin loved me. We grew up together. Now she done, I don't know, slept with my boyfriend. This is not true, y'all. I'm just trying to put a scenario out there. Amen. Now she's my enemy, right? Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, My grandpa died. And my aunt won't help me pay for the funeral. She my enemy. <laughs> Amen. Whatever it is, right? All of a sudden, you got enemies you didn't know about. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's not fool ourselves. Let's not think foolishly. Amen. That everything that goes down is going to be good. Amen. But let's also not vicariously think that everything is bad. Amen. People are people. And until we allow the love of God into our hearts, then we might not be able to treat people. We might, as they should be treated, amen. We might not be able to do like the word of God said, which is to love your enemy, right? But it said to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, everybody's not in church. Everybody's not in Christ though they may call themselves Christians, amen? Everybody might not read this scripture and know that that's what we need to do, amen? Amen. And so now uh, we wanna look at this word love a little bit more. So love uh, occurs 686 times in the New International Version of the Bible, 425 in the Old Testament and 261 times in the New Testament, according to Bible Gateway. Amen. So we want to make sure that we love one another. Amen. Because guess what? God is love. Amen. All right. Now, this verse talks about how his love, God's love, is revealed to us. Amen. But what I want you to see here is the last couple parts of this verse, right? This is coming from John 14, 15 through 21. John 14, 15 through 21. 
And so I want you to see here down at the bottom where it talks about how love will be revealed. Amen. It will be revealed in us. Amen. Amen. And so let's read this really quickly. Uh, let me start down, I don't know, verse 21. It says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them is, is the one who loves me. This is Jesus. It's in red. Whoever ha has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved also by my father. And I will love him and reveal myself to him. How can I love my enemy? Because I have to let God reveal himself to me. God is what? Love. If he reveals himself to me, then I will be able to love like he loves. Amen. But let's look at this because we know who Judas, uh, J Judas is, but this is not the one that betrayed Jesus. This is the one that was left. Amen. And so in verse 22, it says, Judas, not the Iscariot, uh, uh, asked him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Amen. Why are you going to reveal yourself to us? and not to the world. Amen. And so I wanted to look at this because he asked this question, but we have to also ask this question. Why are you telling us to do this, Lord? Amen. Because this, this Judas, he might not have understood that some things are spiritual. Amen. Everything can't be in response to the flesh. Yes, I know you want to knock her out. I know you want to, uh, you know, hit them upside the head with a frying pan. We know that. That's carnal. The Bible says the, car the carnal man does not understand the things that are spiritual because they are what? Spiritually discerned. So Judas here, he was talking out of his flesh because he asked Jesus, well, why would you reveal yourself to us? and not the world. Amen. But we have to realize that we need to hear the word and have Jesus be revealed to us. He came to be a blessing to his people. Like he said, listen, I didn't come to destroy the law. And, 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 and I'm reminded in another part of the Bible, he says something like, uh, I didn't come to condemn. Amen. He didn't come to condemn us. Amen. But 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 he did say in his word, thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, if my people who are called by my name, he said, my people, hey, hey, amen, the ones that are called by my name, if you are going to be a Christian and if you love the Lord like you say you do, amen, first of all, it said what? You will keep my commandments. And 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 not only that, but in First uh, Chronicles seven and fourteen, it says what? Uh, you will humble yourself. Number one, amen. Because if I'm all puffed up and proud, then yeah, I got to deal with you. Because that's the persona that I'm trying to keep. Amen. You all in front of my boys, talking crazy, talking mess. I got to get with you. No, amen. If my people would humble themselves and do what? Pray. Good God Almighty. Why did Paul tell us to pray without ceasing? Because we always encountering something. <laughs> always. <laughs> you looking at me, I'm looking at you, and I know you came for trouble. Amen. But I'm yet praying in my spirit, Lord, have your way. <laughs> Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. They don't even know what they about to do. And I'm looking at you upside your head and I know exactly <laughs> what you came for. But it's not going down like that. Amen. God, God blesses us to be able to be in control of our faculties to the point to where we can respond appropriately. Amen. 
though you may have discernment because discernment is discerning good versus evil. Amen. Did God not say he uh, is, is the one that can see evil and good? Well, he gave us that as well. If you have the spirit of a discernment, which all believers do to a certain extent. Amen. And so you should be able to see the evil and the good. But instead of getting mad and angry and upset and hating the person, amen, we ought to be praying, amen, that this person will get it together. Lord, loose the spirit of control denounce approval. Amen. All of those things that we talked about earlier, Lord, take out, take it out of them. Oh God, even that one that needs attention, Lord, help them father. And see, to humble yourself, what does the Bible say? It says, esteem others more highly than, uh, 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 more high than yourself, right? So if you esteem a person that you know needs attention, then you take the back seat. You don't need attention. Let them have all the attention they need. Let them have it. That's what they need. <laughs> Amen. That's what they need. Because by doing that, I don't have the verse with me, but there's a verse that says, by doing that, you heap coals of fire on their head. <laughs> Amen. Not that that's what you're trying to do, but sometimes if you feel conviction in a situation, take a step back. What is it that you're doing that's off the chain? <laughs> that's out of control. That's out of this world right now. Amen. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever been in that situation? Amen. Where it's like, well, Lord, now what is the problem? <laughs> Amen. So I've been in a situation where I'm like, well, okay, let me let this person. Okay. And then I've also been in a, in a situation where I have been convicted. Like, what am I trying to get? What is it that I need out the situation? Why am I acting crazy? Amen. So we have to be, uh, we have to be able to uh, have God reveal this to us. Reveal it to me, Lord. Reveal it to me, God. What's really going on? Amen. <laughs> and so we have a tendency to want to put things off on other people when in fact God is expecting uh, the, see this is why he said listen don't don't try to get them back because it's up to the people of God he said if my people it's up to the people of God to demonstrate to others the love of God so that they will inquire and say what must I do to be like you well I'm saved what must I do to be saved that's what we want them to ask us, amen? We want them to wonder, how is it that you have the attitude that you have on a daily basis, amen? Coming in full of joy, full of love, amen? Why is that? How is that, amen? <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. How is it that we're able to do this? It's, it's only through the love that comes from the Father. Is anybody hearing me? Oh God, hallelujah. It's only through the love that comes from the Father, amen? And so if anything, if I don't teach anything tonight, I hope you're understanding that, listen, we must come into knowledge of how to love one another, amen? Holds no records of wrongs. In other words, no, not gr no grudges, no grudges. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If someone does something to us, we gotta we gotta get our emotions in check. We gotta get on uh, because listen, it's okay to feel those emotions. We have emotions for a reason. Amen. It's okay to feel that. But the Bible clearly says, listen, <clears throat> be angry, but do what? Sin not. Amen. There is a point where you move from anger to sin. <laughs> what is that point? The point is when we don't take control of the situation. And listen, you got to know your triggers. Because <laughs> there's some stuff that won't even bother some people. But you, it bothers you. Amen. That's okay. 
You just have to know yourself. Amen. That's why we got to love ourselves. So we'll know ourselves. So we'll explore our feelings so that we can get them under control. Amen. The Bible says the fruit of the spirit, one of the fruit is what? Self-control. So that means that it's incumbent upon us. God left that responsibility to us. Amen. To take control. Amen. Are we going to do it perfectly? No. Do I do it perfectly? No. <laughs> Sometimes I get so bad, I just start crying. I just got to go somewhere else. I just got to go somewhere by myself. Amen. But at some point, I'm evaluating. Because the Bible also says, I think it's in 1 Corinthians, it says, what? Consider yourself. Examine yourself. Amen. Whether or not you be of God. Are you of God? And some people, <laughs> please don't be the person who agitates and they know they agitating somebody. Oh, you say you're a Christian, huh? Oh, okay. So you come to try me. But think it not strange, the fiery trial that comes to do what? Try you. <laughs> okay, that's what you came to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we got to figure this out. Miss Debbie said unconditional love. Amen. Unconditional. Amen. And we put, oh, we put some conditions on it. They didn't agree with me. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't do uh, what, what, what I wanted them to do. Control, 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 manipulation. And some people are what I call unsatiable. That means basically you are never satisfied. This person done bent over backwards, did cartwheels, somersault, uh, a, a double roundhouse flip into a cartwheel, and you, you still want more. All in the same day. <laughs> like they can't even get, they can't get no break to the next day. They glad to go to work. Where are you going, honey, to work? When are you going to be home? About seven, eight? But it's six o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah, but the traffic, um, the, um, then I got to stop. Oh, and then a meeting, uh, because, uh, why they got to do all of that? The Bible said that, listen, talks about a, a contentious woman, that a man would rather be on the, uh, on the rooftop than to just be in the house. You just won't stop. Just won't stop. Come on, ladies. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We've got to learn how to love. And you're dealing with an enemy that you probably wouldn't even call an enemy. Maybe it's just some difficulty there. Maybe it's just something there that is contentious. You got to figure it out. Figure out what we can do. Amen humble myself pray seek his face and turn from my wicked ways <laughs> then god will hear you <laughs> praise the lord because there's a verse in the bible that talks about uh husbands love your wives or something to that effect and then it talks about how uh so your prayers won't be hindered do you know you can hinder your own prayers because you won't reconcile we're going to talk some more about this. We're going to talk some more about this next week. Amen. I hope you'll stay in, stay tuned for next week. I hope I made you mad tonight. <laughs> but more so, I hope I am encouraging you to look within, but also to look outwardly to see the whole picture. Because when we talked about those difficult people, I showed you what their motive is based out of, amen? So if you can figure out what their motive is based out of, praise the Lord, then guess what? We can humble ourselves and lift them up in the way that they need to be lifted up, amen? Is anybody hearing me? Is anybody following me, <laughs> amen? Because we've got to get to that point to where we're no longer agitated. 
we're no longer disgusted. <laughs> we're no longer discouraged by what people do. Is it going to happen? Oh, yes. But we can make room for ourselves. Amen. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are what? In Christ Jesus. So we can make room for ourselves. Things that we've done in the past, ways that we feel, emotions that we can't get rid of. Amen. It's time to lay it on the altar. Praise the Lord. It's time to examine ourselves. Amen. It, it might be that person, they probably purposefully, and we're going to talk about purposefully, despitefully, they probably purposefully doing some things. But listen here, we, my people, the people of God, we have got to figure this out. Amen. We have got to get love in our hearts, amen? We have got to get to that point to where, it, like the Bible says, what? Follow peace with all men, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's Hebrews, uh, I wanna say 11, no, maybe 12 and 14, amen? Listen, follow peace, seek peace, Search for peace, amen, in every situation because we're supposed to be what? The peacemakers. That's the same chapter. That's all in that same chapter, chapter five. Chapter five says what? Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall inherit their earth, amen? Blessed are the peacemakers. That's who we're supposed to be, not the brawlers, not the uh, ones who are grumbling and complaining, not the ones who are agitated and frustrated with all our, co we don't like none of them. <laughs> come on, come on. God wants us to love, amen. Love your enemies. And guess what? We're gonna talk about some more of this um, on another night. Amen. So looks like we got a series within a series. Amen. Love your enemies. We got to do part two of this. Why? Because he said, do good to them. Pray for them. Bless them and don't curse them. Amen. So we got to figure out what that means. What does that mean? Amen. Are there any prayer requests tonight? Are there any, is there any question? Is there any common? Is there anything, amen, that we want to discuss tonight uh, before we go? Thank you, Barbara. Barbara said, great message. You talked about me a little bit tonight. <laughs> amen. I talked about me too. Praise the Lord, Barbara. I sure did. I talked about me too. Amen. 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 All right. So we have one prayer request. Uh, for those who are grieving, amen. Any other prayer requests, um, let me know, amen. And so we want to go to God in prayer, amen. And I, I just want um, everyone, again, to consider themselves, amen, and consider the situations and consider your emotions and what it is that has caused the contention Amen. And let's try to get to the root of it. Lord have mercy. So that we can be honorable in the sight of God. He said, listen, to be nice to your brother is, 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 is no, no big thing. But to be nice to your enemy. Oh, my goodness. We got to work on that. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, God, we just thank you tonight. Lord, we bless you. Oh, Father. We thank you, oh God. We glorify your name tonight for truly you are an awesome God, Lord. You're wonderful. Thank you for reigning on the just, just like you do the unjust. Father, for you show no favoritism and you are no respecter of persons, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God, that you didn't uh, do anything to me when I did something to somebody else. Lord, forgive us 
oh God, for the times that we didn't do like we should, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Help us to repent of our ways. Hallelujah, our personalities, oh God. Hallelujah, those uh, those things that are causing us to be triggers for other people even. Father, we pray, oh God, that you will take it out of us. Lord, we pray, oh God, that I pray specifically for someone who's dealing with an enemy. God, hallelujah. And though I pray that I did not trivialize, hallelujah, the detriment that is caused by an enemy. Father, for we know, hallelujah, the damage that can be done, hallelujah, in our lives and that even our emotions, it can be hard to deal with day after day, God. But I pray, Lord, that no one be depressed or oppressed. Father, we rebuke that now, God. I pray that no one, hallelujah, be feeling uh, uh, feelings of bitterness and hatred and malice and rage. Father, I cast down fits of anger. Hallelujah, Lord, God, those things that are uncomely to a Christian. Hallelujah, those things that should not be named amongst us, oh God. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to get a grip, oh my God, to get it under control, Lord. Hallelujah, God, that the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, all of those things will be a part of who we are. Hallelujah, God, that when negative emotions come to the surface, Lord, that you will show it to us speedily, God, that we can that we can get it right with you as soon as possible, oh God. Lord, I pray for the one that is coming after another one. Father, I pray you put a halt to it now. Hallelujah, stop it and cause it to cease by the power and blood of Jesus. Uh, that person that's being tormented and tortured and even terrorized, Father, by some enemy. Oh God, even a bully even someone who's trying to persecute. Hallelujah. God, let them also fall back. Asha, by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To torment your daughter, to torment your son no longer in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you, Father. For what you're doing, God, in the lives of your people. Help us, help us, help us to love our enemies. Oh, God, fill us with love, Lord. Fill us with the precious Holy Ghost, oh God. Hallelujah, help us to repent of our ways, Father. Hallelujah, help us to do that which is pleasing in your sight. We want to be a sweet-smelling savor unto your nostrils, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. So I pray, oh God, that you will continue to show us a more excellent way, oh God. Show us how to handle ourselves in an appropriate way. Show us how to demonstrate love, hallelujah, that, that the onlooker will know that we are your disciples, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I give your name the glory and the honor. People are dealing with all kinds of things. Father, I pray for those who are bereaved in this time, those who are grieving not only the loss of loved ones, but some have lost jobs, some have lost dreams, some have encountered uh, tr trouble, some have encountered problems, some are dealing with issues. Oh God, bless finances right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. You said that you can restore. Hallelujah, everything that the caterpillar, caterpillar and the canker worm, hallelujah, has eaten, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, restore, oh God. Restore positive feelings to that one that has not been able to shake the negativism. Oh God, restore positive feelings, oh Father, to the one that has been dealing with uh, issue for a long time. Let there be no grudges, Father, but let love overcome and overtake and even cover every one of our sins, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you, God, are love yourself. Hallelujah, God, that if we indulge ourselves in you, that we will be whole, Father, hopefully more like you. Help us to be more like you.
Help us to talk like you, walk like you, act like you, Lord. Hallelujah, God, for your name's sake. Hallelujah, Lord. So we thank you tonight, God. I pray for anyone with unspoken requests tonight, those things that we are not going to say. And I pray, oh God, that even the one that might feel convicted from this word, that you will uh, uh, meet them where they are. Wrap your arms around them and let them know that you're faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we give ourselves to you tonight. Lord, we bless you and magnify you above every problem, above every trouble, above every difficult person or difficult situation. Oh my God, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you for this word tonight that we will hide it in our hearts, God, that we will not sin against you any longer, oh God. Thank you for love. Thank you for love. Thank you for love and truth, Father, tonight. And we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So God bless you all. Love you with the love of the Lord. And I pray that you will come back and get the other part of this. I have so much more. Amen. We only got to the first part of that scripture, but I pray that you will come back next week and that we will continue to love on one another until we see each other again. God bless you. And as I always do, I say, Lord, cover us with your blood that you will be safe and protected and guarded until the next time. Love you all. God bless you.